Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Dr. U UT lectures. Topic of today's discussion is about RAS system. RAS system. We'll discuss the entire topic in a very simple and easy way. First of all, I will tell you a little bit about the RAS name. The name, what is this name actually talking about? What is actually this name composition? Okay, what is the name composed of? First, I'll tell you about the name composition. Then I will tell you that what is this uh, uh, system for? And then I will tell you the mechanism how this system is doing its job. First of all, I'll tell you the name. Then I will tell you what is this, this RAS system for. And then I will tell you at the end the mechanism of this system to do its job. Okay. So the very first point, RAS, what is the name actually, full form of the name? It indicates a renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. So three very important functional uh, points are there. Number one is renin. You must keep in mind. Number two is aldose angiotensin, that is here. And number three is aldosterone, that's here. So all these three are actually responsible to make this particular system, that is the ROS system. Renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. Now all these three are responsible to do a very particular job, a very specific job, that is maintaining systemic blood pressure. So systemic blood pressure is actually controlled or maintained by means of these three. So that's why these three are actually making a system and that system is then called as RAS system. Okay. So first of all, I told you the name, the full form of the name. Then I told you that uh, what is this system used for? And uh, I hope you have got that this particular system is used for maintaining the blood pressure. Systemic blood pressure is controlled or maintained by means of the RAS system. I hope you got. Now let's come towards the next point. That is the mechanism. Okay. So we got two points. Now is the third point. That is mechanism. How this RAS system is doing its job. Wait a second. First of all, I would love to tell you a little bit about the functional unit of the kidney that is nephron. You guys might know this very well that nephron is having the very beginning, the very first point that is called a boom and capsule, where there is uh, actually a glomerulus, means there is actually the composition. Uh, there is There are some certain other uh, structures available, but the very important structures for today's discussion are the efferent arterioles, the blood vessels that are supplied to the uh, Bowman's capsule. And then there is actually another projection that is efferent arteriole, okay? So efferent arteriole, efferent arteriole. By means of efferent arteriole, the blood is actually supplied to the Bowman's capsule. And then from there, it is actually moved out by means of another vessel known as efferent arteriole. So here we got the job of two arterioles, afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole. I hope you're getting, okay? Just concentrate. So afferent arteriole is bringing blood to the Bowman's capsule and efferent is taking the blood from the capsule, okay? So A is adding, afferent addition, E exit, efferent, okay? You can get from anywhere. So actually this is uh, the way that uh, I got. That's why I'm focusing on this. A for add, adding, so it is adding the blood. E, efferent, E for exit. And from here is the exit of the blood. Well, so this is the very point that you guys must remember, the very points that you guys must remember. A for arterial, E for arterial, and from here, when you just move a little bit uh, near to the glomerulus, so you will find this particular portion of the arterial, where there are certain cells. Those cells are known as juxta glomerular cells. Okay, juxta means next to glomerulus, so very near to glomerulus. That, that's why these cells are named as juxta glomerular cells. So now just remember these three important portions: number one, juxta glomerular cells; number two, afferent; number three, efferent arterioles arterioles and uh, afferent arterioles, efferent arterioles, juxta glomerulus. So this is the very point that is going to help you guys understand the RAS system in a very easy way now, okay? So now just concentrate. What is happening hereby? The blood is supposed to be supplied through the afferent arteriole. Now in this blood, if this juxta glomerular cells, these cells, juxta glomerular cells, if these cells feel that there are actually uh, no concentration or there is deficiency of uh, sodium in the particular amount of the blood. So in short, these cells are actually responsible to detect sodium in the blood. When it is low sodium in the blood, so decreased sodium cells, uh, decreased sodium concentration in the blood will stimulate these juxta cells. It means these cells will detect the blood that in the blood the sodium is missing. So as it detects this juxta glomerular cell, if it detects that there is sodium deficiency in the cell. So these juxta glomerular cells, these are responsible to release certain hormones known as renin. Okay. So these are responsible to release renin. Now what's happening, 
This renin may also be released by the sympathetic nervous system. Guys, remember that, okay? Once again, just uh, recapping this particular portion, what is happening, the blood is actually moving into the Bowman's capsule, by means of afferent arteriole. Now, these juxta cells, which are just near to the glomerulus, known as juxta glomerular cells, these cells, they are actually having special potency to detect the concentration of sodium in the blood. So as juxta cells, these cells feel that there is low concentration of sodium in the blood. So these cells will then release renin. Now this released renin will do its further job. And remember, this renin may also be released by the sympathetic nervous system, okay? So two very important causes. Number one, low sodium. Number two, sympathetic nervous system. These both are responsible to stimulate the juxta cells and juxta cells are responsible to release renin. Juxta glomerular cells. Now this renin which is released, this renin is responsible to have interaction with the angiotensin which is floating in the blood. Now this renin will first of all convert this floating angiotensin into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1. Then by means of renin, okay? Renin starts converting angiotensin to angiotensin 1. Now this is moving and it will face certain enzymes in the lungs. So during the, the pulmonary circulation, the angiotensin converting enzymes in the lungs, they are responsible to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now this is the very particular uh, product, angiotensin 2, which is responsible to do the very interesting job. Uh, actually jobs. So these angiotensin 2, they are responsible to stimulate uh, the release of uh, aldosterone and that aldosterone is responsible to increase the sodium and water reabsorption from the particular portion of the nephron. Means in short, tubular reabsorption of sodium and water takes place. So aldosterone will act on this particular portion to maintain the level of sodium and water in the blood. Okay, So like this, there is the input of the sodium and water back to the body. So it is not then lost from the body. So like this what will happen before juxta cells, they were sensing that sodium was less. So now because of angiotensin 2, that sodium is actually sensed back, means that sodium is actually then uh, taken back, reabsorbed. So by means of this mechanism, renin was stimulated, uh, juxta cells felt there is low sodium, renin was released, which converted angiotensin to angiotensin 1, which was then converted by angiotensin converting enzyme, uh, into angiotensin 2. So angiotensin to 1, 1 to 2. Then this angiotensin 2 is responsible to release aldosterone and that aldosterone is responsible to bring back the sodium uh, which was deficient, which was not available in the blood. So like this, sodium and water is again available now. So like this, sodium is available and water is also available, means brought back to the blood vessels. So like this, the volume of the blood is increased. So when the volume of the blood is increased, we uh, can guess that now the blood pressure is going to be okay. So here, what is happening? Blood water is increased, sodium is increased. And in the meanwhile, angiotensin 2 is doing another very interesting job. That is vasoconstriction. It is constricting the blood vessels. Due to which, what will happen then? Again, the, the, the down blood pressure is going to be up now. Why? Because it is constricting the blood vessels. You guys can relate this. You guys can make analogy with the pipe of the motor. So when we have a motor here by end, uh, from that motor, particular motor, uh, we project some pipes. So the water is flowing, uh, floating in this pipe. And when we just apply the pressure on this pipe, what happens? The, the water before when it was moving down here by, and the water will be actually uh, moving somewhere more far from this particular portion. Why? Because we have applied pressure. When you apply pressure on the pipe, so the water will move forward, means further forward, okay? So like this, the angiotensin 2, they are constricting the blood vessels and along with angiotensin are actually responsible to stimulate the aldosterone which are bringing water and sodium back to the blood vessels. So like this, the water is also available now, uh, blood volume is increased and uh, vessels are constricted. So before when we were observing that there is low blood pressure or there was a disturbance in the systemic blood pressure, that systemic blood pressure is again a regulated kind by uh, mean of the this particular system and uh, mainly done by the angiotensin 2. So these are the very important jobs done by the angiotensin 2 converting uh, enzymes and at the end by angiotensin 2. Well, regarding angiotensin converting enzyme, there are two jobs. The very first job is this. It is converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. In the meanwhile, it is responsible to convert bradykinin to inactive peptides. 
So this is actually another interesting point which you guys must remember. This is uh, going to help. This point is going to help you guys in the pharmacology when you go for the uh, ACE inhibitors, their side effects. So this is the point that is going to help you guys over there. For now, forget about this point. Just concentrate here. What is happening? Juxta cells, they feel that sodium is less in the body, in the blood, or uh, by means of sympathetic nervous system. By any means, Juxta is actually stimulated. And then those Juxta cells release renin. That renin is then responsible to uh, convert angiotensin to angiotensin 1. And this angiotensin 1 will move to the pulmonary circulation. Here, there is angiotensin converting enzyme. That angiotensin converting enzyme will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And this angiotensin 2 is then responsible to uh, do the release of aldosterone, which will then bring back the lost sodium, and uh, which will then help in uh, maintaining the sodium concentration. Along with it is bringing in the water uh, that is actually further helping to increase the volume of the blood. And alongside it is doing the vasoconstriction, so which is further helping to uh, maintain the blood pressure. So if there is a low blood pressure, and like this, it is also having a kind of feedback mechanism on the renin. So when there is sufficient vasoconstriction allosterone, so then it is uh, in the meanwhile blocking the re further release of the renin. And remember regarding ACE angio angiotensin converting enzyme, that uh, this is responsible to convert one into two, angiotensin one to angiotensin two, along with it is responsible to convert bradykinin to inactive peptides. So like this, the job of bradykinin is not done. And now what is the job of bradykinin? The job of bradykinin is to do irritation in the lungs and it is responsible to cause the dry cough. So this is the extra point if you don't remember, if you're not getting this point, forget about it for now. You will get this point in the pharmacology, especially in the ACE inhibitors drugs. So that's it all for now. I thank you all for watching and don't forget telling your friends about Dr. UUT lecture.